I seen this. This breaking down the the Gringo Pappy. Let's watch a bit of this. This is actually I've I've seen a little bit of it already, but this is really good. Um, what's this YouTube record? The Bachelors of Music. So big, big up the Bachelors of Music. Let's play this. Actually, it's actually it's pretty decent. Um, assessing Gringo Pappy. It's actually gonna be quite good. Oh fucking hell, Gringo Pappy, mate! Absolute winner of a fucking comedy special. So it's called Brendan Shaw's The Gringo Pappy Explained by an Expert. Let's play this. Hello YouTube, my name is Miles Anderson. I'm a professional joke explainer and today I'm watching the special The Gringo Poppy by Brendan Schaub, who is a stand-up comedian and one of the best stand-up comedians working today. Here we go. So already you can see he's got a really big dedicated fan base. Uh, they're outside of Jimmy John's here. Um, by sort of this large uh, business park up by the highway. Um, the lineup's going around the block. Uh, there's lots of parking out there, you can see. Uh, a couple spaces missing, uh, which means that uh, a lot of his fans probably took the bus to get there, um, which is so cool to see that, that his fans, you know, they come. Isn't that kind of. Isn't that. Isn't there some racist overtones of that by saying all of these Hispanic people took the bus to see Brendan Shaw perform? I've always been curious, actually. Why does Brendan have such a large fan base with, like, Mexicans and shit? Do you think it's because of his wife? Why do you think Mexicans like Brendan so much? Because he doesn't embrace Mexican culture. He doesn't speak the language. He doesn't speak highly of the country. He doesn't really like the food. He's, there's nothing about him. I wonder why they seem to, like, you know, gravitate to him so much. Oh, L oh, yeah, I should have known. I was thinking, okay, cool. Yeah, it's an LA thing, isn't it? Yeah, true. But yeah, Mexicans love fucking Brendan, man. They fucking love him. Come from all different demographics. They're very excited to see the show. Here he comes. If, you, if Brendan was actually funnier, if he was actually funnier, he could actually be quite big in the black scene as well, I think. Given what he looks like and how he dresses and shit, if Brendan had actually good comedic chops, he could actually be quite popular with the blacks, with the urban folk, with the African-Americans, you know? He could actually be quite <laughs> quite popular <laughs> with the African-Americans, I swear to God. He actually could get it. But, you know, he's just not funny enough and he doesn't really like black people deep down anyway, so it doesn't really, it's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> There he is. Big boy nation. So, I, you know, uh, he looks like a pretty tall guy. Um, so it's an appropriate track for him to come on. He's got a, a drink, a very classic standout thing to have a drink. He's very relaxed and loose, ready to tell some jokes. <laughs> Takes a little sip, puts it on the stool. He's a very confident guy. What's up, Dallas? <laughs> That would always get me. He's screaming into the microphone like he's at the fucking O2. Like he's in a fucking arena. What's up? It's like, bro. We're right in front of you, man. You're blowing out our ears. What's up, Dylan? Like, bro, 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 bro. Relax, relax. Like, it's, <laughs> it's the screaming in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and he's at some like bar. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, you know what he reminds me of? Sorry, I'm laughing so much because I remember before the pandemic, right? Before the pandemic, I, I, <laughs> I used to be playing in this pub. And it's probably why I don't play it anymore because they'd they be paying me way too much money for it. But I'd be DJing in this pub near where I live, right? And it would be empty. And there'll be like two people in the pub. It's like a craft brewery type of pub. And I'd be fucking going for it in this place, right? <laughs> It'd be like four people <laughs> in this place. And I'd be fucking... Like fucking playing as if I'm in fucking... I don't know. I, I'm in Coachella. I'd be going crazy. And it always made me laugh because I was kind of doing it for my own entertainment. 
because no one was there anyway, I thought, fuck it, let me just make it fun. And I swear to God, I was fucking playing some loud, heavy shit in this fucking craft brewery pub. So whenever I see Brendan doing this, what's up, Dallas? And he's in this fucking bar. It reminds me of how ridiculous I must have looked from the outside. Imagine walking past a pub and you're seeing my big back on this on the DJ booth in a fucking empty pub. Do you know what I mean? Where all the bartenders are like, it was so empty, I'll be playing, and the bartenders will be like on their phones, just like browsing social media, and I'm there like playing, like going fucking crazy, as if like <laughs> I'm in an arena somewhere. Oh, fucking hell. I love Brendan, man. They're in Dallas, Texas. Oh. Okay. Oh. So I guess Jimmy John's is the uh, comedy club in Dallas. Oh, God. Look at you guys. I'm not used to this. Dallas is a little different. There are some ladies in the crowd tonight. <laughs> how many of, how many, how many, how many, how many, Brent, how many, I'm sorry, I said, I said that so many times now, sorry. Do you think Brendan has ever fucked one of his fans' girls before? Cause that's some down dirty shit. Like, do you think he's ever done it before? <laughs> do you think he's ever fucked one of his fans' wives and shit, <laughs> or they've voluntarily offered up their women for him, like in in fucking tribute? Like, I love you, Brendan. Take my woman. Like, <laughs> that is some grimy shit. That is some grimy shit. Oh. I am not used to that. Going after the women. To Off the top, bros. That's. That's what I specialize in. It's a real cock fest usually at these things. <laughs> so I was making fun of the fact that a lot of the time his audience is predominantly men. Um, but there are some... Is it me or is this guy kind of look like Anthony Jeselnik? He kind of has these mannerisms in his face as well. Or am I bugging? Or am I just making sure all white people look the same? Does he have a little bit of Jeselnik vibes for you? This guy? A little bit? Jeselnicky in a face? Some women there tonight, so that's funny. I don't mind it though. I'm the bro whisperer. That's what they call me. <laughs> Are we vaccinated up in here, Dallas? Everybody vaccinated? Controversial topic to go after the vaccines off the top of the show. <laughs> he got you dicey, dicey. Yeah, he knows it's uh I love you, Texas. That's how it is. <laughs> You know what I've always thought? You know what I've always thought? <laughs> I think that person didn't say anything in the crowd. I think he made it up. That's my theory. I have a theory that whenever he, when he said that thing about COVID, that no one did a thing. He makes up this entire scenario. But when you're in a crowd, you can't see anybody. It's dark. I think he made it up completely. That's my theory. I don't know if you guys agree. But I've watched enough of Gringo Puppy. I don't even think there was somebody in the crowd. I just think he did. That was kind of a bit. Big up, Crash. How many? 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 <laughs> dicey dicey how many how many how many dicey dicey you want <laughs> how many how many chocolate chip cookies with sauce on the top do you want <laughs> How many? <laughs> Quantas? Quantas? Oh shit! Quantas? Oh my god! How many chocolate chip cookies? Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh god! <laughs> sorry, sorry. How many? How many? How many? How many? Let's go back. Let's go back. Anyway, cool. Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Crash, you got me there. You got me, you got me. Well done, well done. You got me. Okay, so going back to my point, I think Brendan makes up this entire interaction. I don't think that guy even said anything. That's my theory. What do you guys think? Dallas, everybody vaccinated? 
controversial topic to go after the vaccines off the top of the show. <laughs> dicey, dicey. Yeah, he knows it's uh I love you, Texas. That's how it is. So he's obviously a very skilled comedian because going after a topic as controversial as vaccines can be risky. So let's see how he's gonna land this one. I love it. I love it. There's always one guy. No fucking way, bro. The guy didn't say that. He didn't make a move. He didn't do anything. He made up the entire interaction. That's my theory. So he's doing an impression of a of uh, someone who wouldn't want to get vaccinated and how they uh, would be very stiff uh, with their walking. Exactly. Um, people, they're loving it. That needle's not touching this. I don't know how he's keeping a straight face, man. Honestly, I don't know how this guy is doing this. I don't know how he's doing this semi-seriously. I don't know how he's doing this semi-seriously. Like, big him up, man. He's got bigger resolves than me. He's actually... <laughs> Fucking temple daddy. <laughs> Oh. As he says, he's taking a nacho, dipping in nacho cheese. From... <laughs> oh, my bad, Mr. Whole Foods. My bad. <laughs> okay, so he's got... I can't believe this guy put this shit out, man. Honestly, Brendan. And it honestly makes it funnier when you find out that he honestly thought this special would get him to fears. That's what makes it even funnier. He was under the thinking this special would be the special that would take him to propel him to fucking selling out theatres around the world. That's how. That's why he booked the whole European UK tour. It's sort of like a pat on the back tour for doing so well. That's how delusional this guy is. He actually thought this stuff would be good enough to garner a massive fucking fan base and get people to buy, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I wish I could be this delusional, man. <laughs> and Mr. Ho, he says... He's making fun of this guy. If he didn't get vaccinated, he'd probably shop at Whole Foods, <laughs> um, which is very, uh, you know, a, a granola rich person thing to do. Also, he's got, um, he slapped his, his mic on the knee. Uh, that's a, a really great way of letting people know that a joke happened. It's just by slapping that mic on the knee. It gives them a sound cue. It kind of triggers a primal response to laugh. So again, he's just one of the best. <laughs> Yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Oh, shit. This whole vaccination oh. stuff, I'm not anti-vax, man. I'm vaccinated, but it's uh, it's all in their marketing. They fucked this whole thing up in their marketing. Without Operation Warp Speed, when they launched that, remember they're trying to get everybody to get vaccinated? And they're like, yeah, go to Krispy Kreme, buy a dozen donuts, get vaccinated. Like, <laughs> the fuck? That makes sense. Fat people are like, hell yeah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously the, the observation he's made here is that uh, people who are overweight um, love donuts. Um, so that's the joke there. Exactly. It was so, it was so, ra you know what's so random and dated about this? Because this is around the whole like Johnson and Johnson time, right? Because I remember that being a thing. Krispy Kreme's was making an incentive. Get, basically everyone was doing their little promo run to get people vaccinated. So COVID jokes are already dated, right? It's already late and it's already lame. So imagine doing a COVID joke, but then doing a very specific COVID joke about the first period of COVID. Like you're doing early, early, early COVID. Like COVID jokes are already let, they're already dead. Then you're doing COVID jokes about stuff that happened in the beginning of COVID. It's like, bruh, like, honestly, this guy's sense of humor is fucking wild. Like, including this joke in the special is insane is insane really to think about it because it's so dated it's unreal uh very good stuff <laughs> it's so confusing i remember i called my mom i was like hey mama are you uh, are you getting vaccinated she's all i wasn't and then you know i love donuts and fucking... <laughs> you have to use every single line when you're a stand-up comedian you'd imagine every single line is important everything you say has to kind of lead to something, set up something. That's just a waste of a sentence, isn't it? You called up your mum and she's, so what, your mum is fat now? What? Huh? Okay. 
So he's calling his mom fat there. <laughs> Do you remember the first dumbass that messed it all up for everybody? Scared the shit out of him from, from getting vaccinated. Remember that idiot? He's all over the news stations. The first moron to get that Johnson & Johnson. Right? Clearly a meth addict. They just... Nobody checked into his background. Remember that? They put him on the news. He's sweaty as shit. He was on all the major broadcasts. He's like, holy shit, dude! <laughs> Yeah, I got it done. I got that Johnson Johnson, bro. I don't feel good, bro. I can't stop sweating, bro. I feel like I'm growing wings. Bro. So I, uh, I don't actually remember this uh, character uh, that he's talking about here, the meth addict character. Um, I also haven't observed that uh, meth addicts have one eye lid uh, come down. But obviously, this is a character uh, he's creating. is like a surreal comedy that he's doing here, um, which, of course, is a big hit with the crowd. They love it. Um, Brendan Schaub is one of the more gifted physical comedians out there, along with his uh, well-written um, premises and jokes. So I, I'm excited to see where this is going here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay low for a little bit on the vaccination. I'm just going <laughs> to... Remember that moron? It's all in marketing, man. Like, they need to hire some just a dime piece actor we've never heard of. Just blast them all over the news, right? Just somebody who's fine. Get them on there and just put them all over the news, all over the nation. Like, I, yeah, dude, I got the Johnson Johnson. I feel pretty good. I feel great, actually. If I'm being honest, one side effect, if I, I just want to be up front with everybody. Goddamn dick's down to here. Just <laughs> fucking... Also, not that it matters as well, but he does stutter a lot in his, like, <clears throat> we'll do it. It's hard to speak live on stage, I'd imagine. But when you're doing your special, you really should rehearse a lot of your bits. It should just be sharp. You shouldn't be stumbling over your words and stuttering and mushing words, mashing, mushing whatever words together. And he does that quite a lot in this special. I didn't really realize that until I watched this um, little reaction thing. He does mess up a lot of his He's all like stuttering. He's like, bro, take your time. It's your special. You're on stage. They're, all, they're there to see you. Take your time. Take a breath, take a minute, go through it slowly, and you're fine. But he literally, it's like he's rushing through to get home quickly or something. It's super odd. See, I like, see, that's a really good punchline because I knew that's what he was going to say uh, just before he said it. And so it's very satisfying when you can guess this the joke so before it's over. So um, it, uh, it's nice. It makes you feel very smart, uh, which is uh, really great. And one of the things I like about Brendan Schaub's <laughs> comedy is that you always kind of know exactly what he's going to say. Um, it's very similar to jokes that have been made before. Um, so it's super, super nice uh, to know that uh, he's a real master master of a predictable stand-up. It's too much. <laughs> and the crowd loves it. You have a line of bros at CVS just like, just trying to do my part, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be in Dallas, man. You guys do it right. It's good to be in Dallas. I know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason I decided to shoot my special here, man. You guys just give me so much love. I absolutely love Texas, man. I, uh, yeah. And yeah, Texas loves thank Brendan you. Schaub. I, uh, also, not, not to be a stickler, but if you're going to open up your comedy special and go, what's up, Tellus? Why don't, well, why wouldn't you end, why wouldn't you do this little love for Texas tag at the end of that? Why are you doing it here? No? Isn't there a weird place to put it? Like structurally, if you're gonna start a special by saying, What's up, Dallas? Surely you just tag at the end of it. Oh, I'm so happy to be doing a special here. I love this place. Honestly, you guys are fucking wild. You guys are fucking crazy. This was my safe haven when COVID was around. I was going fucking stir crazy at home with my family. And this is the place where I come to where you guys don't give a fuck about COVID, right? Am I right? Fucking fuck mask, right? For pussies, right? Like you'd go from there. You wouldn't like do this weird bit about covid and then start talking like like it's a, it's a strange order to put your jokes no <laughs> like it doesn't even make any sense i haven't touched a mask since i touched down it is fantastic <laughs> la is not like this y'all la is north korea with a beach <laughs> but they give us wi-fi so that's cool what i never got that bit of the joke North Korea with a beach, okay, somewhat funny. But they give us Wi-Fi. 
surely you'd say, but at least we have good food. But we also have good food. Or something, right? But at least we have a, I don't know. But we have a fucking, uh, but we get, but, but, but at least we get Chick-fil-A. We have an in and out Like you do something like that. You wouldn't say like Wi-Fi, no? Because a joke would be like, you know, they eat crickets and bats over there. You'd say, yeah, we, at least we have burgers. At least we don't have to eat bats or something. I don't know. We don't have to eat tree, but whatever. Something along those kind of lines. It's an odd thing to say, no? Wi-Fi. Like. Yeah, a bit of, hy- top- bit of hyperbole there. Uh, California is not quite uh, like North Korea. Uh, I don't know if you guys have, uh, I don't think anyone has escaped <laughs> California with a body full of worms as they get shot as they try to cross the border. It's not quite the same, but obviously bringing up North Korea is very funny uh, when you're in that, when you're in Dallas. This guy is such a cunt. He's so condescending. <laughs> uh, that was good. He's so condescending. I swear to God. That was brilliant. I'm locking us back down. <laughs> I can't go through it on a lockdown. Oh. Straight up, my, the shop household barely made it through the last one. We eat our way out of that last one. We did not do well with it. Also, Dallas, my lockdown's different. I got a five-year-old and two-year-old. Parents know what I'm talking about. I would rather... I said, bro, man, you should have put some ice cubes in his mouth to get that tongue swelling down because that mush mouth sentence... Like, what was that? Lockdown's different. I got a five-year-old and two-year-old. Parents know what I'm talking about. about. I would rather do anything yeah. else than be locked down with those fucking demons 24 7. Oh, I hate my kids. <laughs> we're not even locked down. My girl was fighting with me the other week. If we get locked down, we're fucked. She was fighting with me. Fucking yeah, yeah, foul. Oh, he's got that same voice inflection with the beans toast, with the bean cheese, bean cheese, no? Everything eat. Bean cheese, bean cheese. All right? It sounds the same. It's that voice, same voice in, inflection. Everything eat. Bean cheese, bean cheese. Look. Listen, listen again. Fucking demons 24 <laughs> 7. We're not even locked down. My girl's fighting with me the other week. Mm-hmm. We're locked down. We're fucked. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got that same way. <laughs> he's prepping you for that. Everything they eat. Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. <laughs> she was fighting with me. Fucking Nina yeah, yeah, Fauci, Nina yeah, Delta, Nina yeah, Mass, Nina. Yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? Nina, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see myself. Oh my God. My life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. <laughs> So <laughs> he's making fun of how his wife sounds like kind of a meh, 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 meh. I think that was the first genuine laugh. <laughs> he couldn't believe it, innit? <laughs> My laugh would be better if I was he's like, what? <laughs> that, was a, that got him. That actually caught him off guard. <laughs> it would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. <laughs> so <laughs> he's making he couldn't comprehend what was going on. He's actually confused. Like, what? <laughs> okay. Uh, see, Brendan breaks everyone's brain. He breaks everyone's brain. He's like, what? Why Why would the gay thing... What, what's the, what does that have to do with the... Ju- anyway, like... <laughs> Making fun of how his wife sounds, like kind of a... Nye, 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 which was like a really popular style of, uh, of comedy back in the 1950s. Um, so he's kind of hearkening back to the golden age of stand-up here um, by making fun of how his wife is uh, an annoying nag, um, and also that his children are demons. So he's kind of a you know he's kind of a classic comic in that way. Um, <laughs> not a lot of comedians are doing that these days, but Brendan Schaub is obviously very different. Um, classic comedy, and uh, the crowd nice. absolutely loves it, especially the men. <laughs> if I was locked down with the bros, Dallas. Quarantine with the homies? You know how much more fun we would have? Oh my God, dude. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was all, what the fuck? No. It's so rehearsed, isn't it? You feel, like, it's so cringy. Like, I just realized it, right? Look, look at this. He knows exactly what he's going to do, isn't it? Hand in the face. <laughs> like, it's so <laughs> He thinks he's that's the thing about Brendan. He thinks he's killing it now, man. Oh man, this is so horrendous. Look at this. The hand over the face. All day we'd work out. At night we'd fuck each other. (laughs) 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 This guy was all what the fuck? No. 
So obviously, you know, he's making a joke that being gay is very funny. Um, <laughs> again, sort of a, this is more of a 1990s style comedian that would do a joke nice. like that. Um, again, he's just sort of hearkening back to that age of stand-up. Uh, really cool to see here. The crowd enjoys it. I mean, the thought of two men having sex is just absurd. So that's really the crux of that joke there. I thought we were going to play video games, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. I love that. No, fuck no, I'm not into that, dude. I'm not. I don't want to be locked down with you anymore. I just. <laughs> what are you gonna do, bro? You're bored. <laughs> He's laughing at his own jokes. Something you. Can you imagine how much work it took him to make these jokes too? He probably worked really hard on these jokes. That's the thing. He probably worked really hard. He probably had a lot of sleepless nights crafting these jokes, like actually rattling that little pea-sized brain of his inside his head to bring... Like He actually... I, I, I can really believe that he worked hard. It didn't result in much, but I can actually believe he spent a lot of time on these jokes. He stayed up late. He went and did a ton of spots. He recorded himself. Like, he actually put this special together. Blood, sweat, and tears. Like, crayon on paper. He absolutely constructed this whole thing and thought he fucking smashed it. That's the funny thing about it. Always love to see and stand up. You know, he's really enjoying himself. Sometimes, again, the crowd doesn't understand that a joke has happened. So you either laugh at your own jokes or you slap the mic on your knee. You know, sometimes you really <laughs> just got to let them know that you've said something funny. Uh, and he understands this. This is why he's uh, such a great comic. Ah, <laughs> oh, so I wonder, I wonder if there's some comedians out there who think it's hacked to laugh at your own jokes. Is that possible? I never thought about that just until now you mentioned it. There must be a group of comedians who are such purists, they don't believe in laughing at your joke. You should be able to, the joke should be able to be funny enough that people get it's a joke and they have to laugh. Your job is just to tell the joke as a, as a sort of comedian. That's, that's a skill. I wonder if that's possible. People do. That it serves as a challenge. Like, don't laugh. Don't tag your joke with a laugh or a giggle. Actually let people laugh themselves. It is kind of hacky, isn't it, right? To be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Because it's kind of like you're, you're, you're kind of like, you know, not forcing them, but it's a little bit of a, what's that thing called? What's that word called again? It's kind of like a, is it called a social pressure? Whatever, it's, 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 it's kind of like a cue, isn't it? It feels like a bit of a cue. When you laugh, they feel like they have to laugh also. So it's a bit of a cheat. That's why it could be a bit hacky. Oh, I can see that. But Bert does it a lot. Bert does it a lot. Um, even Tom does it a lot, right? Giggles. Um, Rogan doesn't really laugh at his own jokes. Rogan doesn't. He just screams a lot. He just shouts a lot. He just screams. Rogan doesn't do it a lot. Bert does it a lot. Tom does it a lot. Can't think of a few more. A lot of them do that. Laugh at their own jokes. <laughs> One can dream, Dallas. One can dream. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this to a live audience. One thing that I'm grateful for, for the, the governor of California, Governor Newsom, for locking us down for an entire year and ruining small businesses. Because I wouldn't have realized this unless I was locked down with my family for an entire Yeah, exactly. Everyone's saying it, it quite yeah, using us a crutch. Um, it's fine when a comedian breaks character and laughs at a good joke in a moment. Keyword is good, exactly, Uche. I grew up with Bowie and Stones and Zelda. <laughs> it's not like... Yeah, True Ghost Hat Big Singer. Let me see you said exactly. Eric Griffin does it all the time with his jokes and drives me crazy. Yeah, Eric Griffin a, is, a, is a serial giggler of his own jokes. Rogan doesn't laugh at any... <laughs> hey! Hey, big up clown K20. Rogan doesn't laugh at any of his jokes, exactly. Jeremiah Watkins, yeah. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's always that. Fucking laughing. I don't think it's a rule, but as a comedian, you should avoid it. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit of a, it's an easy thing to do to get a cheap laugh, like to laugh at your own jokes. That's probably why I have to give Anthony Jeselnik a lot of credit because he's deadpan and he doesn't laugh. He just, and he bows through his jokes as well. He bows through them. Um, but yeah. Entire year, 
I realized. Yeah, big up Rodeo. What's up? What's up to my guy Rodeo? What's going on, my friend? De Chappelle rarely does that. What makes him so good as well? Now, De Chappelle loves his own jokes a lot. De Chappelle's a serial mic tapper as well. He loves a good mic tap, isn't it? He's like, ah. um, De Chappelle loves loves a good fucking. I love a good like. I'm a black guy. Ah! He loves that. He loves that black guy face. Ah! You know, we all do that. Ah! <laughs> Slavery. Ah! <laughs> Police brutality. Ah! <laughs> Fatherless homes. Ah! <laughs> Why the thirty percent of the population cause all the crime? Ah! <laughs> Girl's not cool. She's just not. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a friendly human being. I uh, I married a goddamn rattlesnake. <laughs> She's like, this might so the, the joke is that he hates his uh, he hates his wife again. This is the second time he's mentioned this, so he uh, must be building towards a big punchline. This line. is my girl, man. This is what I'm dealing with, yo. At, listen, LA is different than Texas. My, they just opened up my son's school last week. He hasn't been school in a fucking year. They just opened it last week, first day of kindergarten. So I got him his first day outfit, looking all fucking fly, dope kicks, giant backpack, backwards hat, looks just like me. I'm walking up for school. I'm like, dude, it's about to be lit as fuck. <laughs> all his little friends are out front in the first day outfits. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are cute as shit. I need to document this. I go, T, get tight. There's a bunch of you squeezing tight. Daddy's gonna take a picture. Ready? Cheese on three. Ready? One, two, three. Cheese, they're all cheese. I take out my phone, I'm all, hell yeah. I snap a pic, I text it to my girl. She gets it, she looks at it, she goes, crop out the uglies, resend. <laughs> what? Excuse me? So Brandon Schaub is making it clear that his, his wife is the real monster in the relationship, which, you know, I don't know if is, is uh, necessarily uh, funny, unless he's kind of getting towards uh, something uh, later on in, in the special. Um, but uh, he's just kind of, he's building sympathy with the crowd. You know, he's really wanting the crowd to like him and hate his wife, um, which is, again, kind of something a master craftsman does. When you've got that stage time, you've got the power to sort of shape the narrative. And so the more people like you, um, the better they're going to be with uh, understanding your jokes and, and uh, giving you that uh, applause break. I said, you're in a group chat to other parents, dumbass. Okay, so that was the punchline. Is that she... Look how, look how cocky. Look, look how smug he feels. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he fucking crushed it with that one, didn't it? And they're in a group chat with the other moms. <laughs> he thinks he crushed it. Oh, we all need a bit of Brendan confidence in our lives, man. We all need Brendan confidence. I swear to God. Look at him. <laughs> exactly. He thought I'm, I'm him. Uh, he thinks he's him. <laughs> And she's like, and I'm like, and the crowd's like, and the woman's like, and the Addies are like, <laughs> and the 18 year old is like, oh shit, and then Chin's like, Cat's like, <laughs> George is like, BGL. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell, man. Savage, y'all. Savage. Oh, and then he takes a little... So I don't... I I don't know what the other... If the other parents said anything, but that's kind of where the story ends there. He takes a little sip of his... Uh, of his... Uh, beverage there, and I think we're getting into the next bit here, so... That was the whole... Uh, that was the whole bit. I married a Mexican, y'all. I married a Mexican. <laughs> I thought you would like that. Listen, <laughs> listen, da listen. I thought you guys would enjoy that. Listen, Dallas, Dallas. I don't mean like Taco Bell Mexican. No, 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 no. I'm He's been doing his joke for so long. Not Taco Bell Mexican. Like, is that even a saying you guys have in the states? Is that if, is that a saying? Like, what what does a Taco Bell Mexican even mean? What does that mean? They're cheap. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> What's a Taco Bell Mexican? 
<laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, it's such an odd thing to say. Exactly. You know what? There we go, Natashki. It would make more sense if he said, like, Tex-Mex or something, right? But the Taco Bell thing is, like, weird. It's like, what? Like, cheap and tasty. Readily available. Franchise. What? Like... Do you know what I mean though in your head? Like, if somebody said to you, My wife is not my wife is um what do you call it? El Chapo Mexican, not Tex Mex Mexican. Even though it's really dis you know, it's obviously incredibly rude and disrespectful, you would still it would still be a little bit more funnier and have some sort of sense because you would think in your head Tex Tex Mex is like commercialized white people Mexican version of food and culture, right? That's where your brain would go. But Taco Bell is like, I don't get the connotation between she's not, ta like, who thinks Taco Bell is Mexican? You know, that that's the thing I don't understand. It's like, where does Taco Bell work in Mexican? Because they sell tacos that you think is like, you know, like, what? And then you see his wife and you're like, is she Guadalajara Mexican though? I don't know. <laughs> Seven dirty. I thought he meant cheap. Exactly. <laughs> my wife is not. My wife is not Taco Bell. She, what? So if she's not, she she's not cheap. She's what third world? Because this is Mexico. Is Mexico regarded as a third world country? Is Mexico? Is Mexico a third world country? Because is that what he's basically talking about his wife in saying So the Mexico so Mexico's definition is a third world country. So he's basically calling him he's basically calling his wife a shithole. <laughs> great great husband never met him. Great fucking husband, never met him. Enjoy that. Listen, Dallas, Dallas, I don't mean like Taco Bell Mexican. No, 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 no. I'm talking Guadalajara. Born and raised. Came to the States 10 years ago. Illegally Mexican. Also, what do you think this is about? What do you think this is about here? What do you think? Do you think... Who's that guy that shot that woman? Who's the woman? What's his name again? Who's the guy that shot the lady, unfortunately, at, on a film set ac by accident? What's his name again? You guys know in the chat. Who's the guy that shot the lady at the film set by accident? What's his fucking name? Actor guy. Um, He got away with it somehow. Yeah, Alec Baldwin. Do we think Brendan's at Alec Baldwin where his wife told him that she was born in Guadalajara, Mexico, and that she came to the country illegally when she was 10 and he believed it. When the actual truth is, Mexican, sorry, uh, Mexican, <laughs> Brendan's wife was actually born in LA. She did an interview with some like site before where people tore her apart. But basically, she told this interviewer that she was born in LA. She's born and bred there. So do we think Brendan is lying on purpose or do we think Brendan's wife lied to him and he believed it? What do you think is happening? Because that's what happened to Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's wife pretended like she was Spanish to him and he just believed it. He didn't know that she wasn't from fucking, you know, uh, what'd you say? Mallorca. She's from some middle of the country place in America somewhere. What do you think? Do we think Brendan is in on a lie or do you think he believed the lie? I'm honestly, I'm leaking everywhere. I'm laughing so much at this shit. Joanna was born in California. Exactly, yeah. She was born in she was born in LA. I I, I think uh like Baldwin, he will end up shooting and killing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's sad. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. I didn't ask that, but cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a link both with <laughs> okay cool 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 oh, oh shit <laughs> oh. it's 
10 years ago, illegally Mexican. <laughs> the real admit, he's talking about how the Mexicans uh, come across the border illegally to the United States. Uh, a few other comedians have, have mentioned that observation before, but uh, it's, he's just sort of bringing it up again so the crowd uh, gets a little bit riled. Deal, Holyfield, y'all, this shit is... I did a lot of white girls, big titties and flat asses before her, and it just never worked out for me. It just would never work out. And I don't forget this, one of my boys goes, dude, dude, papi, what are you doing, bro? Get with a Latina, bro. You know why? Because they're fun and they're spicy. No doubt, definitely spicy. Girl spicy, right? Does he have any Mexican friends? All of Brendan's friends are white anyway, isn't it? The, the only ones that aren't white are the ones he pays. This is funny enough, right? The only friends, the only friends that Brendan has who aren't white are the ones he pays. <laughs> so press X for doubt at this alleged Mexican male friend who told him to go for Mexican women. It's like, all right, mate. All right. Girl, spicy. You know what spicy means? They're ass. Paprika. <laughs> Definitely spicy. Girl, spicy, right? Girl, spicy. You know what spicy means? They're assholes. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> Honestly, imagine him looking at you like this at the sta in the stage. You're sipping on your fucking. Uh, you got your little, uh, <laughs> your little espresso martini, and he's giving you that. You're gonna laugh in it. You're gonna laugh. You're like sipping your little martini on a date, and he's like laughing. Like you're like what? <laughs> you're tripping a little, having a little fun, and he's just like staring you down, making you want to laugh. Like, <laughs> honestly, that like, what is this? You laugh now. You laugh now. Come on. Oh God Almighty, bro, Brendan. <laughs> Kenny's Sorry, laughing. Man. He's laughing at his own stuff, showing that he's enjoying his uh, observations. And uh, the crowd loves it. <laughs> Dude, when we first got together, she was cooking authentic Mexican food seven nights a week. I'm not used to this. I was like, what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, dumbass. Not fajitas every Wednesday. Real Mexican dishes, y'all. Real shit from the motherland. I'm talking. Surely there's a joke in there for like, it was Taco Tuesday every day up, all up in my house. I know something really crass like that. Why did he say fajitas every Wednesday? Why don't you just go for the easy... If he's going to start doing Kobe jokes, let's do a Taco Tuesday joke. Just go, yeah, hell yeah, it was Taco Tuesday every day up in that bitch. Why not? Why did he go for fajitas Wednesdays, by the way? Strange, isn't it? Fajitas every Wednesday. Is that a thing in, in America? Do you guys have fajitas on Wednesdays? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. Fajitas every Wednesday? It even sounds no. like a long day. Just say Taco what? Tuesday every day. Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I love this kind of like... I love this sort of like effeminate gay thing he does when he performs as well. What's this all about? I'm not used to this. He kind of like, he kind of gets all zesty and sassy on stage. Why does he act like that for? When well, he's not like that in person. I was like, what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. Like, what is that? What is that, do you think? That whole like zesty, does that, do you think he's one of those guys that thinks when you're zesty, it's like you're automatically funny. It's like a guy putting on a wig. <laughs> it's like, or it's like that meme of that girl putting the, the, the frozen chips on her head. Oh my gosh, she's so crazy, you know? It's that kind of meme, isn't it? It's a really odd thing, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> no, dumbass. Not the heat is <laughs> Excuse me. You're not the expert. Is that? <laughs> oh, fair enough. What's the case? Fair enough. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh, okay. Authentic Mexican food Seven nights a week I'm not used to this I was like what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> No dumbass Not fajitas every Wednesday Real Mexican dishes y'all Real shit from the motherland I'm talking Huevos and chills <laughs> <laughs> Carne <asada. laughs> Pico de gallo. <laughs> and my favorite, chili. Ah. <laughs> so he's making fun of obviously how uh, Spanish sounds uh, to an anglophone. 
Um, <laughs> great observation. Um, we're going to see if he turns that into a joke later on. Every night, though, every night, seven years later, every fucking night. I know I look Latin. This so I, I don't think he does. I don't know who I am. She's like, honey, what the fuck is happening right now? Is he not a Puerto Rican shortstop for the Dodgers? What the fuck's happening? I don't know. What? <laughs> Dude, I did that 23 and me. I did that shit. You spin the cup, you mail your DNA in. I did that. They sent me to drive mayonnaise back. <laughs> I am white as shit, Dallas. Yeah. White person handout, page seven, bitch. I need a fucking tater tot once a week. So one, white people uh, like mayonnaise and tater tots? <laughs> 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 Actually, what is a tater tot? I don't know what that is. What the fuck is a tater tot? Is that like a... I'm, I'm assuming it's some sort of like potato. What's a fucking tater tot? What, what the fuck is that? Que es tater tot? Tater tot. Oh! Um... <laughs> I didn't know what that was. What is tater tot? <laughs> Why do you call it that? A tater tot. What's a tater tot? <laughs> a tater tot <laughs> is a great heap potatoes from. The... Why do you call it a tater tot? That's such a weird name, tater tots. Oh my god, man. Oh, <laughs> how many do you get in a serving? What's a normal serving of a tater tot? Is it like six, or do you have to have twelve? What's a normal what's a normal serving? How much how much how, how, how do you buy these? By the six, by the five? What's one serving of tater tots? How many is it? How many tater tots do Americans eat? Fucking hell. Americans consume 70 million pounds of tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers are fucking gigantic. 70 million pounds of tater tots you guys eat every year. But how much is in a serving of a tater tot? What, what is that? How much? How many do you get like in a box? You get like six? You get 20 tots, 12, eight. Holy shit, bro. Fucking hell. 12. Nine pieces. God damn, bro. Tater tots. <laughs> you motherfuckers, man. Fucking hell. And I'm, I'm assuming they come in cheese as well, right? You have cheese inside them, ham and shit. I'm assuming they stuff shit inside them, right? Fucking hell. Look, all these white hands. See, only the whites, the, the Caucasians. Is there, is there like black tater tots? Do they exist? Let's let's see if there's black tater tots. Is there such a thing? <laughs> tater tots black. Does that exist? Black people. Let's see. Do black people eat tater tots? Oh shit! There are. Oh no! <laughs> Look at the black guy. Covered him in cheese. He makes it like a lasagna, right? Like like, like a tater tot lasagna. Oh man! I thought it was only a white people food. Fuck! I can't I can't do the whole race thing. I think everyone in America eats tater tots, right? Tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tater tots. What the shit is that? Oh, <laughs> so tater tots and mayonnaise. Oh my God. Tater tots, too hot to handle. You can't handle me. <laughs> <laughs> Handle with caution, tater tats. <laughs> what the fuck, honestly? Oh, shit. Tater tats. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh so much. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I offended anybody from America with my tater church jokes. I'm sorry. <sighs> uh, that's another sort of cultural observation he's made throughout the course of his life. Um, crowd likes it. Uh, again, other comedians have sort of mentioned that before, but it has, it's not really as funny as, as when Brendan Schaub says it. Uh, I think a lot of his stand-up is sort of um, based on other comedy he's watched, and he just sort of 
mentions the, the similar things that he's also seen uh, with other comedians. Uh, and then he goes on stage and just sort of mentions it. And, uh, and people are really liking it. It's really good. Would a fucking Hot Pocket kill you every now and then? Every time dinner would come, I'm like, oh, does she really think beans go with every goddamn meal? Is she serious? <laughs> she for real? Every time dinner would come, like, does it ever occur to her? Maybe Brendan's not trying to shit his pants tonight. How about that? <laughs> Fuck. Occur to her. Occur. Occur to her. Big applause break. So sometimes if you don't have, um, like, uh, if your joke doesn't really have a, a sort of really a lot of humor to it, you can just say shit his pants really loud. <laughs> and uh, people people in Dallas will just give it right Tater up. Tats. Every time dinner would come, my asshole would go like this. Fuck, ah, bro! Ah, bro. Ah. We're dying down here, Bobby. It's so spicy, bro. So that was his, uh, the impression of his butthole was the, uh, was the punchline there. Um, obviously, buttholes don't talk. Uh, they don't get stressed out, and they don't uh, call you poppy. Um, so that's sort of the, the humor there is the absurdity of your own ass uh, talking to you and calling you poppy. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican, man. Thick with three fucking C's. Dude, everything they eat. Be branding. Oh, he did it. Branding. Branding. He went from the three C's. I just clocked that. It's a bit of branding. I'm thick with three C's. Get it? Tiger thick. Thick boy. Get it? Thick boy. Tiger thick. Three C's. I didn't realize that at first. A bit of branding in there. A little bit of branding. One more time. And calling you poppy. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican, man. <laughs> Thick with three fucking C's. Dude, everything they eat, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. I'm like, what the hell, man? I'm just gonna carb load year round? We never tailor off the carbs? That's the game plan? We're just all gonna be built like armadillos? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's very funny to say, um, built like armadillos for carb loading, because I would think, you know, he probably mentioned the fattest animal he can imagine. Um, That's what I was thinking too. Or just, or like a dog body or something. Anyway. When I think of overweight, carb loaded animals, I don't think of armadillos. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he meant this to be a joke or if he doesn't know what an armadillo actually is. Um, but either way, it's, uh, it's very funny. I, I think that it's funny he kind of went reverse i would have said you know maybe he's a pig or a you know a uh a, a walrus or something something you think of as fat but he just says an armadillo which i either means he meant to say that as very very funny uh as a bait and switch or he actually doesn't know what an armadillo oh, is <laughs> do you guys think brendan knows what an armadillo is i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what an armadillo he just used it because it sounded clever he just used it because it sounded clever <laughs> look at that face he doesn't know what an armadillo is he has no idea what an armadillo is it's not a chance in it <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I got so thick in the pandemic, I, uh, I decided to go on a keto diet. If you know what keto is, keto is a diet where you can't eat Mexican food. That's the diet. <laughs> it's, pr it's pretty easy to stick to, man. Just don't touch a fucking tortilla, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's my problem, though. Here's my problem. Every Friday, my mother-in-law cooks my favorite Mexican food at my house. She has her own house, but does that mine. It makes no sense. So before I started this keto diet, I went up to my girl, I go, hey, you know I love your mom, her food, best in the world. It's my favorite, that's why I'm so fucking fat. Listen, do me a favor though. I don't wanna be tempted, I don't want in the house. Do me a favor, tell your mom I'm on keto. Can you do that? She goes, won't you tell her? She speaks English, I went, but she doesn't though, but she doesn't. <laughs> you keep saying that and she clearly fucking doesn't. 
crowd here is very generous. Uh, he's just sort of setting up the, the joke here, and they are l loving it. Do me a solid. Tell him I'm fucking keto, okay? Eight weeks goes by, your boy hasn't touched a fucking tortilla. Nothing. I walk in the house last Friday. Show sure enough, there's a fucking fiesta! Of my favorite food. You know how, like, Theo Vaughn can't bring down cocaine? That's hack, isn't it? That has to be the hackest of all hack moves. Mentioning your famous podcast friends in your comedy special. That has to be up there with the most hacky shit ever. Right? Has to be. My good friend Burt Kreischer. My good friend Tom Segura. My big pal. My pal Bobby Long. So, was it Bobby? What's his, what's his, what's his fucking name? What's his fucking name? Bobby what? What's his fucking name? Why am I, why am I forgetting his name? <laughs> What's his fucking name? Bobby, uh... Why is his name escaping me for? Bobby, um... Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Sorry, Bobby Lee. Not Bobby Long. Bobby Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bobby Lee, wherever you are. Oh... Nice. So he's calling out another comedian uh, for his cocaine addiction. Um, uh, a lot of these people are fans of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, bro, man. I can't do this no more, man. <laughs> I'm broken, y'all. I'm broken. I need some tater tots. <laughs> I need some tater tots. <laughs> I need some tater tots. <laughs> Give me a serving of tater tots. Oh. <laughs> bean cheese, bean cheese tater tots. <laughs> How do you fucking order that at a bar with a straight face? Can I get some tater tots <laughs> for me and my friends? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, 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 my eyes. How do you order that stuff? Oh, <laughs> tater tots. <sighs> Oh, my head is hurting, man. I don't know why I'm laughing at this so much. There's sort of fans about uh, of all the behind-the-scenes <laughs> stuff that he works on. Oh. And so uh, mentioning any kind of that uh, sort of podcast universe oh. is obviously going to get a big uh, round of applause from this crowd. You know how, like, he struggles with cocaine? Like, if there was cocaine on the table right now, he'd fucking <sighs> snort it from right field. You feel me? <laughs> God bless him. I love that fucking dude. Okay, you have to, if you're going to mention Theo, just leave it at that first bit. You know, how, you know, mention the joke. You know how Theo can't be around cocaine? That's how I'm like with fucking nachos. Say that and leave it there. Don't keep fucking digging in. He has to his nephew. Like, Come on, bro. Cringe, cringe. That's I am with fucking Pozole. I see it, dude. I will fucking take it to the snout. I can't be around it. I see it, I eat it. So I walked in, I go, mama, mama, you know, I love, mama, what are you doing? I know you know, I'm on keto. I know, I know you know, somebody told you I'm on keto. She goes, mijo, mijo, bueno, andale, andale, mijo, mijo. Cabron, cabron, look, cabron, cabron, cabron. <laughs> andale, andale, <laughs> arriba, arriba, oh, oh. <laughs> if you know, you know. Andale, andale, arriba, arriba, oh, oh. <laughs> If you know, you know. All my hip-hop heads in the chat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, big old Jared Mellorick. You know, you know. Honestly, <laughs> honestly. Oh, that's sleep, man. And then you and then you do a and then you do a fucking scan over to his fucking mother in law and she speaks better English than Brendan. That's the, that's the funny part. He's making it seem like she's some abuela hunched over in the back, as BGL said, you know, cooking fucking tortillas out in the street corner. But she's actually 
a very well put together older la older lady that speaks better English than fucking Brendan. That's the funny part about it. If you told me she has a degree, if she has some sort of doctorate or something, I believe you. Like she graduated from a prestigious school in America somewhere. Like she got like you know adult fucking you know learning certificate. Like I'd believe you. She got her own practice or something. I'd believe you. She seems very well put together. Very, you know, uppity and stuff and clean and whatnot, whatever. Very, very, um, very Western, right? And he's describing her like she's some, literally, like she just fucking popped out of a telenovela or something. It's like absolutely hilarious. She grabs a straight, she goes, Cabron, Cabron, look, the Keto's. <laughs> it's Keto, bitch. <laughs> ah. So that's, uh, that was so the punchline of that um, bit that was about um, two, almost three minutes long was that he uh, was trying to tell his uh, Mexican mother-in-law that he was on the keto diet and trying to tell her this. Lost in translation, she thought he was on a taquito diet. Um, so that's sort of the big punchline, obviously, uh, when things get lost in translation huge comedy can occur and he's a master of his craft he knows that uh that was just a golden opportunity to write i think i realized when you got that bit didn't brendan get that bit from that joe rogan clip <clears throat> there was a sorry there was an appearance <clears throat> sorry brendan on joe rogan experience ages ago a fight companion i think and he said something like instead of saying keto he misspoke and said, obviously, as he always does, and said taquito. I think that's where he got that spec that bit from. I think so. I think that bit came from him saying it wrong. Right? Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember that? Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, taquito. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if that's possible, because I'm sure... He's the one that got it wrong and Rogan corrected him. Let's see. Oh, I can't, can I see anywhere? I don't know. Something about keto. Oh, can I get it? No, I probably cannot. I'm probably not going to be able to find it. Pronunciation. Let's see if I can get it. <clears throat> He gets it wrong, and then I'm pretty sure Rogan corrects him. Where is it? He can't pronounce. Okay, let's see if he can't pronounce anything right. What is it? The, the, the... Cool, let's see if maybe it's this clip. Let's see if this is the one. Is this the clip? Well, let's see if this is one something here. Oh, no, I don't think it's the right one. This is not the right one, though. Oh, fuck. Wish I got it. I don't know which one it is anyway, but I know I know for sure there's an episode of a fight companion where he's miss he doesn't say Kyo, he says Takito. And then they all laugh at him. So I'm sure that's what he says. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's go back to the video. <clears throat> right a great bit. I'm just gonna stay thick, y'all. It's my DNA. And then he called her a bitch. Oh, Even the other thing she, you should know uh, about Dana Mexican. No. Prepared a nice meal for him and his family. Um, <clears throat> but that's obviously, he probably made that part up. Tell me this there's me flaming hot Cheetos all over your house. <laughs> they love them. They love them. It's like catnip for Mexicans. They love them. Is that true, by the way? Again, we don't have a big Mexican population in the UK, so I'm, I know I'm asking this and it sounds fucking crazy, but is this actually true? Do Mexicans actually love Flaming Hot Cheetos like the way he says it? Is this like a meme? Like, is this like a, is this like a thing? Or is this just something he's making up? Because it's the first time I heard about him, oh, Mexicans, are, they love Flaming Hot Is that a thing? Like, Mexicans love Flaming Hot Cheetos? Yes. Someone saying no? Yes. So what? It's a it's a number one. Black skin black people fuck with them hard. Okay, cool. They sell it in school with limes. They squeeze limes on top of the Cheetos. Fuck. That must be bossing. 
There's always a chubby Mexican girl who always eats flaming hot, hot. <laughs> I thought you said, Asad, I thought you said there's always a Mexican, chubby Mexican girl that eats flaming hot tater tats. <laughs> I think I've got a kid's brain. I think I'm just laughing at the fact that it, it says tater tats sounds like, sounds like tater fats or tits. I don't know why my brain is not able to just process like, Tater tats without giggling like a little kid. Flaming hot tater tats. <laughs> Me and my friends want some flaming hot tater tats, please. Oh, God almighty, mate. <sighs> <laughs> So that's just a, a little observation, a kind of self-contained joke. Uh, the Mexicans are, uh, they love flaming Hot Cheetos. Um, to be fair, I think I would take Takis over, over flaming Hot Cheetos, personally. I've had Takis. Takis are fucking tasty as fuck. I think I'm taking Takis over flaming Hot Cheetos. The flaming Hot Cheetos, after a while, that flavor gets a bit annoying. Um, it gets a bit boring really quickly. I'll take Takis over flaming Hot Cheetos any day of the week. He doesn't, he doesn't even really close it out. Uh, that way, he just sort of uh, mentions that observation and then just kind of waits for the uh, the laugh. To yeah, exactly, Game Breed Footballer. Brendan is killing this guy's will to live. In the beginning, he was laughing, then he's sort of questioning everything about his life. It's like, fuck, you know, how did this guy get a Showtime special? I'm struggling open mic I was I've just started my career I can't even get a, I can't even get an email back from comedy so how did this you know I mean it's like all the things are contemplating running through his head you're right he's definitely bored <laughs> die down I'm the only person in my house who don't speak Spanish I feel like a refugee in my own goddamn house <laughs> my white friends learned a Latino before I go dude just fucking learn Spanish put a little effort in learn Spanish how hard can it be I'm all bitch I am 38 <laughs> I struggle with English at times. That is true. You know what it feels like that my five-year-old son roll up on his bike and talk shit to me in Spanish? You know what that feels like? As a father, you know what that feels like? But that's definitely a choice, isn't it? I wonder if that's... But to be fair, I wonder if... Because I don't think that's quite normal, really and truly. But then I'm thinking to myself, like, I bet a lot of those, like, white guys that I like, Asian women, they probably don't speak a lick of whatever Asian language of the woman they're into, are they? I wouldn't imagine a lot of those white guys are like Chinese women or like Korean women or Japanese women. Well, do they even speak the language? It's probably it's probably not that uncommon, but there's something odd about being into women from another culture or country but not making any effort to speak the language. It's super strange. Maybe because I'm used to seeing or meeting people who have the opposite, who if they like Hispanic, Latin women, they also like everything about the culture. They like the music, they like the food, they like the TV the media, the entertainment, they like everything about it. So they properly go all the way in. They go jump in on the deep end and they want to learn everything about it. Um, and also I've known other guys also, like when it comes to like Asian people, they just love everything about that too. Do you know what I mean? They travel to the country, they go backpacking and stuff. They want to learn the language. They might live out there for a bit. But this is an odd combo to be somebody like him, like living in LA with somebody from Mexico, met by a bunch of Mexicans there and he absolutely does not give one fuck about trying to learn the language. Especially when these kids are bilingual. It's like, hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. I wonder why. I don't have a clue what he's talking about. I have a clue. Yeah, exactly. Um, big up Crash. Appreciate it, brother. I'm a sucker for cornrows and manicured toes. <laughs> Same? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Big up Crash. Oh, God almighty. Blood in my face. Yeah, exactly. I think Colin said it. But Spanish is Spanish is. It's not like it's fucking Russian. Do you know what I mean? It's not Hungarian. It's not Georgian. It's a fairly easy language to learn in terms of the languages you have to learn if you were with somebody from another country. I really do wonder what. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Clue. I thought puto meant dude for the longest time. I dropped him out of his school last week. I was all, later, puto! <laughs> Teacher was like, what the fuck? I'm all, puto, puto! <laughs> so obviously this whole crowd uh, knows what puto means. Um, I myself uh, don't know what that means. 
Uh, it would be nice if you'd sort of explain this a little more for uh, people that don't live in Dallas, but uh, obviously he's got a really uh, big fan base here and there's no reason for him to, you know, expand outside of the uh, American Southwest because um, he's obviously doing very well here and that uh, the crowd really likes this kind of inside baseball. Puto? <laughs> Well, the many things. So that was that. That was so that bit was about learning Spanish, uh, and his kid. Everyone in his house. Anyway, I'll leave it there, man. Um, I'm, I, I have to, I have to, I have to jet. Oh fuck, you know, man, that was fucking incredible. This guy's really good. Um, give him, give him a follow. I'm gonna give him a fucking like. I'm gonna give him a fucking um subscribe. Please check out the batches of music. Probably do some more from if he does more coming down the line. But that was fucking awesome. Big up bachelors of fucking music. Please give him a like. Please give him a follow and support this guy because that was absolutely incredible. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he kept a straight face for so long, but that was fucking phenomenal. I swear to God, that was really fucking good. <laughs> oh, God almighty, mate. Honestly, I loved everything about that. I really did love everything about that. Um, 